So we're in the shop today and we're just doing a little bit of uh, general maintenance, taking a look at our snowmobiles, hoping that by looking at our snowmobiles, it'll actually start snowing. To address a frequently asked question that we have uh, about our belt drive system. So on our belt drive system, people ask, you know, how do you change a belt? You know, what are the advantages? Uh, the big advantages are the rotational mass, the overall, the weight loss of the kit uh, on the snowmobile. But two, the fact of after last year, seeing a lot of broken chains and gears, uh, the belt drive works really well. If you have an issue, you can change a belt. So today, that's what we're looking at. So in order to change the belt on the, on the mountain or in the back country or in a trailer or in your mom's basement, I don't care. You need to start by removing the three screws on the left side of the cover. So when you installed this kit uh, in the instructions, it talks about on the right hand standoff about using Loctite on those bolts threading the bolts in until they touch the cover and then backing them off a quarter of a turn. Uh, and this is the reason, this is the big reason why. So now we can take this cover and we can drop it down in here and it slides, uh, get my wire tucked in there, but it'll slide right over top of those screws. So now we don't have to worry about taking the screws off on the right side. So again, we're gonna start by removing the three screws on the left-hand side. Those are from, a, are, those are an eighth inch standard Allen wrench. So after you remove the three screws on the left, cover will slide out. From there, you can see that we have uh, the bottom washer that holds the bottom gears on, and then the six screws that surround it. Uh, the best way that I have found is I do not like and I do not want you to twist the belt. Uh, you know, the belt is best if it's kept round. You can, you can pinch the belt there, that's fine. You do not wanna pinch the tops together, the bottoms together. And the reasoning why is there's carbon fiber cords in this belt. And if you start pinching them with the, the material that the belt is made out of, it will actually start breaking those cords in the belt and then you've ruined the belt. So never, you know, if you're going to store it like this is fine. I prefer to store it like this. I'll actually, I carry one of these in the in my backpack. Um, I carry very little of it in my backpack, but I do carry this or in a tunnel bag. I just leave it in this state. So going back to the bottom gear, you'll need a 3 8 socket or an Allen wrench for the center bolt and then a quarter inch for the six bolts around it. So I start off by removing the center bolt with a 3 8 Allen wrench. Uh, the washer and the bolt will come out and then I'll remove the six screws surrounding it. The center hub will slide off the splines and then the bottom gear will come out. Once the bottom gear comes out, now you have access to putting the uh, belt back into, into the, the chain case. Uh, I like to start is I will take the belt like this. I will insert it on the left hand side of the idler. So this is the idler bolt or the tensioner bolt. Uh, in the process, you'll need to loosen this 9 16 and then adjust the factory tensioner screw back it all the way off. So run this tensioner all the way to that side. The belt will slide up on that side. It will go over the top gear and then the bottom part of the belt, you'll place back into the lower chain case over the bottom drive shaft. Uh, once you have that in place, now you can take the bottom gear and put it back into the lower cover. Uh, the center hole is quite large, so it will go over the end of the shaft. You'll need to kind of mesh the teeth on the belt to the gear a little bit uh, to kind of get it to that point. And then you can insert the bottom uh, hub so that it goes over top the splines. From there, you may need a buddy to help you. I have found instead of in the back country, if you're gonna do it, instead of trying to rotate the track, go to the secondary side and have your buddy just rotate the secondary. Being that the belt's already on the top gear, it's gonna help rotate this gear on the bottom 
until the six screws line up. As soon as you get, say, one on the top and one on the bottom, or one at nine o'clock, one at three o'clock, once you have those two lined up, don't tighten them all the way down. Uh, leave them you know, somewhat loose and then insert all the rest of the screws. Get all the screws tight or all the screws started and then you can start tightening them. Something I like to do is I like to use a silver marker and I like to mark on the outside of the tensioner where the belt is sitting at rest. So right now in the shop, and then also where how much movement I have. So that way it'll show me how much it's moving. So as of right now, it's moving about three quarters of an inch. So again, when we go ride this sled that five to seven miles, the chain case is going to grow from the, the, the bottom shaft and the top shaft are going to grow apart. So then the belt is only going to move about three sixteenths of an inch and that's with you know, that seven, five to seven pounds of force. And you can use a spring gauge. I just use a finger. It's just as easy, but you still want the belt to move a little bit when it's hot. The biggest part is, I stress, making sure that there is at least three quarters of an inch of movement when the sled is cold. Uh, that is the best and simplest way that I have found to do it. A lot of you may say, well, that sounds like it takes a long time. It may take you 20 minutes or a half hour, but at least you're riding that sled off the mountain. So if you have any other questions about this, don't be afraid to reach out to us at the shop. Uh, and we can answer any questions you have. Remember, pray for snow.